This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We are currently just 15 days away from the 2023 NFL Draft, which seems bananas to say, given uh, it seems like, I mean, the tournament just ended. We got a lot of stuff going on, but 15 days from today is the first round of the draft. We're going to talk about some NFL draft betting, talk about takeaways, things we've learned the past couple of years, how to apply those to the 2023 draft, and talk about some NBA playing tournament stuff with Dr. Ed Fang to get you ready for tonight's games. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and numberfire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for number fire joined here as mentioned by dr ed fang you can find his work over at thepowerrank.com check him out on twitter at the power rank as well ed you've had some time to decompress after the uh, national championships how you doing today i'm doing pretty well i'm actually still reading a book called the miracle of saint anthony's which is about dan hurley's dad and uh his high school so i feel like uh he was a he was a high school coaching legend and uh particularly in the state of new jersey and yeah, I'm still reading the book. It's a fantastic book. Uh, so I still feel like I'm kind of living a little bit in the college basketball world through that book. So, but uh, it's nice to get some time to a little bit more time to read and dig into that and and find something that I'm really enjoying. And uh, yeah, working on some other stuff too. So uh, it's been it's it's a good time of year. So you are spending your time reading instead of catching up on sleep. Um... <laughs> I feel like at some point the sleep's got to come. I know John Rothstein says we sleep in May. And we're not there yet, but like at some point you got to catch up. I don't think Rothstein ever sleeps. No, that's my, that's my guess. <laughs> I, we sleep in May is, is a mantra. It is not actually, I don't think it's the way he actually operates right. based on like the time of his tweets. I don't think he can sleep ever. Like he's kind of like Schefter in that like tweets right. are fine at all times. Four o'clock in the morning, Shefty bomb. It happens. You know, I'm not never yeah. surprised at that point. Yeah. Oh, and, and then I and then I'm reading like the longest Woj bomb ever, right? So, because Woj wrote the Miracle of Saint Anthony's. Oh, did he? Okay. <laughs> yeah, this was way back in the day before he was dropping Woj bombs all the time. I love it. Well, that's very cool. Well, we'll have to get a we'll have to go back to Quarantine Corner at some point to get a full uh, book review of that. Never want to return to Quarantine Corner, but I'll take a book review at any time uh, to break down Ed's thoughts on that. We're going to dive in and talk about ways to bet sports. We don't have models uh, because, you know, we got a lot of NBA games coming up. We don't have podcasts we can do every weekend uh, to talk about those games. So we're going to go through some tools you can use when you don't have like full models at your disposal if you want to bet the NBA. We'll talk about Ed's process there and then talk about the NFL draft, talk about takeaways we've had from betting the draft the past couple of years and what that means for 2023 as well. But first, a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. Tomorrow, we'll have some thoughts from Tom Vecchio around the Saturday games in the NBA playoffs. We'll talk about uh, the final play-in games as well coming up on Friday and get Tom's thoughts on a 13-game NHL slate for tomorrow. Uh, we'll talk some EPL coming up Friday. All that right here in the Covering the Spread podcast feed. So make sure you're subscribed wherever you get your podcasts. And if you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating as well. Speaking of the NBA playoffs, they are here. You can turn crossovers into cash with FanDuel. Just visit FanDuel right now and place a $5 bet and you'll get an instant $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. There is no better place to bet all the action than America's number one sports book just go to FanDuel and sign up to get a hundred and fifty dollars in bonus bets when you bet your first five dollars FanDuel official sports betting partner of the NBA gambling problem call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Massachusetts hope is here gambling helpline ma.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in New York 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope and Y. in Arizona 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Connecticut 1-888-789-7777 over the ccpg.org slash chat in Indiana, 1-800-9-WIT. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700. 
or in Kansas, ksgamblinghelp.com. Louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP. In Maryland, mdgamblinghelp.org. In West Virginia, 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with the Kansas Star Casino LLC. Bonus issued is non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See full terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Now, Ed, neither you or I have numbers on the NBA, but we may still want to get some bets down on the NBA. And I want to talk about ways we can still do that responsibly, obviously, without having models. And you have been doing this. You've been putting some bets down the NBA via some tools you found where you can use market insights to kind of get uh, get fun, better good routes to betting things even without having your own numbers so what are those tools how can we use them and anything you found for tonight's games my process goes back to the logic of sports betting this is a book by uh, ed miller and matthew davidow and they talk about how a lot of the sharpest betters don't necessarily look to originate in some sense they look for the weak market first and maybe let this handicap be a little simpler so in the book, they talk a lot about no hold markets between different sports books, right? And so the idea is, um, you know, if you if you can bet uh, a side of, you know, uh, you know Broncos plus three at uh, eh, Broncos plus three plus one hundred at one book, and then you know you can get the same side plus one hundred, um, you know Chiefs minus three or whatnot, then you can bet whatever side you want, right? And 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 you should in principle not lose money, and you don't need much of an edge, right? You don't have to get over the vig of, of 2.54% or whatever. Yeah, 2.54%. You don't have to get over that vig if you can find lower hold markets. And so that's what I try to do with the NBA and NBA player props. Betscope is a really good tool to do this. Uh, this is something created by Colin Davey. It's something that I've been using. And when you when you click on a game, it, it kind of finds those easier markets. Uh, there's, there's a whole bunch of terminology, but essentially look, I'm looking for like some low hold markets, right? So what is a market in which, um, sports books tend to differ and you're not going to find too many differences on game spreads, but you will on player props. And so that in general is my approach. Betscope is like a tool that, that tends to find markets that are off. And, and it's usually, uh, uh I mean, the, the example today is a little bit weird, but you know, usually you can find a pretty weak you can find a pretty weak number at a weak sports book, and you can go ahead and bet that. So that in general is my approach, right? Find the weak market first, do a pretty simple handicap, and do a little bit of betting. Uh, it's worked out in general for me so far. I've done this uh, a couple times in Five Nuggets Saturday in my newsletter, and um, you know, if I'm if I'm looking for some action, this is what I do. And again, the thought process there is looking for. Because we have so many sports books in each market, I know obviously not everyone has this because I live in Rhode Island. I have to bet at Rhode Island Sportsbook if I don't go to Massachusetts or Connecticut. So I have to bet here. I can't find a no hold market unless they make a pretty bad mistake, which you know doesn't typically right. happen. Uh, but if you have eleven different sports book at, at your disposal, like Illinois, finding a no hold market is not as difficult as it may seem. Um, if you're shopping across. You know, 16,000 different markets, which is what we've got here with all these player props available. You can find some spots where if you are comparing across books, you can find situations like that. And basically what you're saying is sites like Betscope will run the numbers for you to try to find and identify those markets and make it easier on you where you're not generating your own projections and stuff like that. Other thing I like about Betsco personally is that um, if you go there, they have distribution calculators. I've talked about this in the show before, but you can um, put in, like I can go to number fire, get a rebound projection for Zach Levine, put that in there. And it'll show me the, the, uh, the odds you should have over under various numbers. So you can have someone else's projections, plug those right. into you know, Betscope, if, if you want to use there or uh, or elsewhere, it'll tell you like the expected odds based on that projection. If you assume it's accurate, try to get an over under on various numbers. So you can look at the available sports books to you find, try to see if you can find a number that way. That's one route you can do. But like you said, I think finding no hold market can be the better route here. And also you can use projections to find which side you want of a no hold market because 
I mean, if it's a big enough edge, you could bet both sides of different books to lock in a profit. But uh, what Colin or what they what they recommend in the book is picking a side, right. basically yeah. picking a side you think is right. Um, you could lock in a profit by betting both sides, but margins will be smaller there for sure. So you can do it that way. So a couple different ways you can use uh, those props. Now, you said you had some stuff for tonight's game. What do you find while using these tools for the play in games tonight? Yeah, the late game is uh, New Orleans and Oklahoma City. And one thing that really stood out in BetScope was uh, Brandon Ingram, a uh, number of points when I checked it this morning. A lot of the books were at 30 and a half. And some of the weaker sports books, like <coughs> Barstool, uh, were way lower. And that's usually not the way that you want to do it. You usually end up betting at the weaker sports books and, and, and towards the consensus of, of some of the stronger sports books. Um, but that's actually not what I found with this one. So my handicap is pretty simple. Brandon Ingram is coming off a 42 point game in his last game against Minnesota. He also had like 12 rebounds and seven assists, pretty monster game. And obviously this is a play in game and his minutes are going to go up. His usage is probably going to go up, but he's not the only scorer on the team. He's averaged 24.7 points for the game. I expect a little bit of regression in this one. So I, I bet Brandon Ingram under 30 and a half points. Uh, it's 29 and a half, I believe right now. Yep. That's mm -hmm. what I just saw as well. Shaded towards the over, but yeah, it's one of these, um, you know, I, and I like when I'm looking at player props, I'd like to bet the under, right? If that's mm -hmm. what regression in the mean tells me, I'd like to bet the under. And that's what is going on with, with Brandon Ingram here as well. Um, so uh yeah so that that's generally my process like i said before usually uh it's not FanDuel that i'm betting at it's some other sports book uh like <laughs> barstool and and betting whatever way the you know FanDuel usually is at but that that doesn't happen to be the case this time i also took under 44 and a half for points rebounds and assists for brandon ingram obviously i just i just gave you those numbers for his last game and he was way over that um, but he averages about, I mean, roughly 35 for points, rebounds and assists. So even if you count for the fact that he's probably going to play more, even if you account for the fact that his usage is going to go up, that's, that's a pretty tall ask. And, uh, so, uh, I took under 44 and a half points, rebounds and assists for Brandon, Ingr Brandon Ingram as well. And again, that's all without having your own numbers. It is just using tools, uh, trying to find weaker markets, trying to find spots where yeah, one exactly. book is off from others and using that to lean on how to bet things. Uh, you mentioned the Ingram points number, uh, 29 and a half under minus 104 right now. At number fire, they have Ingram's point projection at 25.6. You plug it into Betscope to get a distribution under 29 and a half should be priced at minus 232 so having it at minus 104 implies there's still good value there so again that that's routes you can take to bet into markets where you don't have you know experts here to tell you this stuff because again games running the weekends we're not here on the weekends and stuff like that so you can find ways around even without having your own numbers and i think that that is it's a good tool to have because like you said the principles of spotting soft markets those are good things to learn. It's why you should read the logic of sports betting. Uh, you yep. know, Ed Miller, uh, Matthew Davidow did a great job there. It's a, a, I would say like a preeminent book when you want to read, if you're trying to get serious about this. Uh, yep. And that really illustrates why this process is so important. So uh, check those out. The Ingram one more so used as like a, an example, but yeah, it is applicable. If you're listening to this before Wednesday, I want to take that in, but I think it's more so showing the process you got to get there than the actual bet itself. Absolutely. And yeah, definitely continue to use that process. Absolutely. And it's not just for NBA. It's for everything, you know, finding better ways to make things simpler on yourself can be a smart thing as always. Well, I, Jim, I do find it useful to look at sports that, you know, a little bit something about. Um, I actually made the mistake that Desmond Bain played for Dallas instead of uh, Memphis uh, in my newsletter once. Whoops. And uh, actually, that was one of the ones that lost because had I kind of realized I had him on the wrong team and John Moran <laughs> wasn't playing that night, maybe I don't make that bet. Maybe not. But um, yeah, so uh, yeah. It, it, it is a running joke on the number of fire slack that I am the NBA expert as, as someone who 
does not really watch games or consume it, you know, uh, yeah. just following the insights of other smart people. It's okay to do that at times. Obviously, you want to have your specialties and stuff like that, but never a bad thing to spot soft markets and take advantage of those. Speaking of potentially soft markets, let's shift focus now and talk about the NFL draft. And Ed, this is something we talked about pretty often the past couple of years, and you've gotten really into betting the NFL draft. And that's happened over the course of a couple of years. I know it started largely because of COVID, where we were had nothing else to bet on. That's right, yeah. But it's been about three years now where you've been betting the draft and kind of learning from these markets. So when you look back at the past couple of years, what do you think you've learned? What are the important tools you think you've gained from betting this that you want to apply to betting in 2023? Right. So betting the NFL draft for me is, again, something where I don't actually use my own tools. I have actually done my own wisdom of crowd stuff in the past, but I haven't this year, and I don't know if I intend to. Mm -hmm. uh, Benjamin Robinson does a pretty good job over grinding the mocks, and we'll talk a little bit, a bit about that later, but... It, you know, betting the NFL draft for me is a way to pay attention to players coming into the league, uh, to look back on my college football numbers and say, uh, you know, how can we evaluate these players and project them at the next level? You know, can can Kentucky have an awful passing success rate and will Levis succeed at the next level? Yeah, if you have a Josh Allen type miracle, yeah, it's definitely possible. Um, so for me, you know, it's a way to kind of dig in. It's a way to listen to podcasts, follow some sharp people that I will talk about uh, a little bit later. Um, but yeah, just pay attention. And, you know, when markets move, try to bet markets that are related to, to those markets as well. Um, it, it's something that anyone can do if you want to put a, a little bit of time into it. Uh, if you love football and, you know, there's really not much else to follow right now. It's 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 actually kind of fun. So, I, I mean, I've gotten into it just because I find it fun and it's and it's a way for me to keep up with players. Um, and it, um, it, it, you know, it's it's pretty beatable, you know. Uh, you know, FanDuel and DraftKings are putting up a lot of different markets. And, oh, yeah, that's another thing. I mean, I try to bet them when they first come out. Um, so I think DraftKings is like the only one that actually has draft position for various players up. So that would be something I would try to dive into, try to find some edge. Um, I did uh, I did send out Will Levis over seven and a half in my newsletter. It's kind of moved against me a little bit. I mean, there's certainly a chance that Indy takes him at four or Las, uh, Las Vegas takes him at seven. Um, but I, I think he's definitely trending downwards. And um, th there's a lot of situations in which he falls out of the top 10 completely. So yeah. Uh, yeah, so so things like that, uh, you know, look for the weak markets when they open, just pay attention and have fun with it. And I think a key part of paying attention is knowing to what to pay attention to and how to proceed with caution around some of that, because the NFL draft markets limits are lower, which means a lot of times when things move, it's going to be based on information, uh, based on information that everyone has, you know. So if Chris Morrison sends a tweet out about the Panthers liking Bryce Young, that could move the market and it could be disinformation. So I think that's the tough part for me, Ed, is knowing how skeptical to be of market movements, given that this is a less informed market than what we have in terms of, you know, big, bad stuff like that than we have for almost anything else. How do you balance that? You know, you're looking at trying to identify how you can bet based on other movement. How do you right. properly balance knowing the markets may be less efficient while still trying to find good numbers? Is it just getting good closing line value on markets that will move eventually? Or how do you kind of balance those two factors? I mean, closing line value certainly matters. I mean, I sent yeah. Devin Witherspoon to be the first cornerback plus 300 out to my members, and it's minus 175 now. So in general, like I, I, I think that's a good thing. Um, this that certainly is a weaker market, right? So uh, you know, you do have to be cautious there. Again, I would kind of look to how long the market has been out. Yeah. So these draft positions at, at DraftKings have not been out as long as the market for the first overall pick, which has been around for forever, honestly, like through the fall. So, um, you know, if you see a big move in who's going to get picked first, it, you know, it's probably more likely than not um, going going that way. I, I, I would definitely trust it. We can talk about that more in a little bit. So, I, you know, I would say like it's a combination of experience and knowing, uh, you know, when to do this. I mean, like you mentioned, like this is my third year pretty seriously getting into it. Um, so 
just a little bit of experience and 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 you know experience that you can pull from other markets as well right 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 exactly so the, the difference between when a market opens and, and right before close now you mentioned the first overall pick that's a market that moved a lot last year and it moved correctly um with Travon walker getting talked up and yeah. eventually taken first overall this year we've seen bryce young go from an underdog cj stroud was pretty heavily favored to go first overall but now young Minus 270, that was uh, minus 300 as early as yesterday, and it's now minus 270. When you look at this market, Ed, do you find any reason to bet against the steam that Young has garnered? Could it, you know, maybe be disinformation out there? Or do you think there could be value in Young? Because I think, you know, in a lot of draft markets, there's value in laying big minus numbers because value is value. What's your read on this first overall pick market with where things stand right now? I think with the first pick, you often get, I mean, you tend to get pretty huge favorites in general. So I think two years ago, uh, Trevor Lawrence was, you know, maybe minus 10,000 or something like that. It was like off the board eventually. Yeah. (laughs) It was off the board eventually. Right. You know, just like the markets for like whether Carolina is going to take a quarterback or, you know, the position of Carolina's first pick is, is off the board. So I would tend to trust this movement simply because it is the first pick. It is something that we probably should have a lot of information about. There are a lot of journalists out there covering this. Um, I, I would tend to believe this market movement, you know, more so than like, you know, who the first tight end is going to be taken or something like that. Right. Um, last year with uh, with Walker was was pretty interesting because because a bunch of the sharp mockers were actually on that before the market moved the yeah. weekend before the draft, which was pretty cool. I was actually in Ohio for a soccer tournament and and couldn't bet it and so i had to text some people back in michigan to to get down on that um so yeah that was an example um where uh you know the 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 good strategy was to try to find some plus numbers on uh, a couple of different people that could be the top pick um that actually would have worked really well in the nba draft last year when you had like yeah. three guys that were going to be the top pick and and you know i think you could have gotten like 20 plus 2200 or something on on day paulo bonfero to the, the day of or something crazy yeah. like that right um i actually think this is probably going to head more towards the definitive favorite um that's kind of what it feels like bryce young has definitely been the kind of top rated quarterback uh, according to the experts and if if carolina believes in that i think that's you know, I wouldn't be surprised if we see minus a thousand soonish. And I think the important thing too, is knowing which sources to trust on this stuff. Um, Like I know a couple years ago, Adam Schefter was saying, Oh, the 49ers may have traded out for Mac Jones. And that wound up not being correct, but his track record is amazing. And so I don't, I think it's important not to overrate being wrong once. Uh, and right. knowing the sources to trust. Uh, Schefter is one that I trust a lot personally. Despite that, I think that he deserves to be trusted in that regard. And there are some people who will put stuff out there that I'm not going to trust. So right. understanding the sources, Chris Mortensen is one of the guys who's mentioned Bryce Young first overall. He's a guy to trust as well. Um, so parsing through the information, deciding which sources you want to trust, I think is a key thing within this as well. Now we're going to do a more full draft prop preview later on. We'll talk about that either next week or week of the draft and do a full dive in. But Ed, when you're looking at the sources you trust, looking at the markets, the way they've moved, anything stand out to you right now that you want to bet uh, entering this year's NFL draft? For sure. Uh, I actually like looking at the total number of quarterbacks in the first round. Uh, it's, it's four and a half at FanDuel right now. And, you know, I mean, there's, there's pretty much a lock for four of them. So Ryong, Stroud, Richardson, and Levis in that order. I did bet Levis over seven and a half in the position, but he's 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 he's, he's going to go in the first round. And so this bet comes down to where Hendon Hooker gets taken. And Benjamin Robinson over at Grinding of the Mocks has seen a pretty huge uptick in his draft position. Uh, he's a pretty interesting prospect. He did light it up at Tennessee. The idea is that that doesn't necessarily translate uh, to what he's going to be able to do in the NFL. Um, he's 25 years old, so that's definitely a knock against him. Uh, quarterbacks that get drafted at 25 don't end up doing that well. I think of guys like Brandon Whedon. But uh, a lot a lot of uh, – so the Wisdom of Crowds tool definitely say hookers on the rise. 
Um, there are some sharp mockers like Daniel Jeremiah that are putting Hendon Hooker in the first round, thinking a team like Minnesota is going to take him there, let him sit a year behind Kirk Cousins. So, so right now, uh, I think this morning, it, uh, oh, actually, it's right there, uh, plus 144. Yeah, that's what I bet at this morning. So I feel like the price should be like plus 100. So I, th I think plus 144 is pretty good value. Obviously, I don't have to tell you that the quarterback's the most important position. So it's not a stretch to think that some team late in the first round wants to go, if they like Hooker, wants to go get him uh, either to start. I mean, not maybe not to start, but a as a, a player that they are looking into long-term to groom as their starter. Uh, I do think there is value there. And uh, I, I like over four and a half quarterbacks. And I think the thought process with Hooker is that because he has this ACL injury, you might want the fifth year option. And that's why you might want to take him in the first round to get that extra flexibility with him there. Cause I I'm skeptical of hooker too. Um, you know, he, like you said, is very old. He's actually the fifth oldest quarterback invited to the combine since 2010. Uh, Stetson Bennett is the guy right above him. So we made jokes about Stetson Bennett all throughout the playoffs. He's only a hair older than hooker. Um, if you look at the 25 oldest quarterbacks to get combine invites since 2010, only one has been a top 100 pick, and that was Whedon, who was 28.5 years old on the day of the draft. Jeez. So he's an outlier. <laughs> wow. And so the data says guys this old typically don't go in the first round, but Kenny Pickett was pretty up there, too. He's 23.9 right. on right. the day of the draft. So he was up there, too. I think that if you're looking at this market right now, you can get plus 144 over four and a half. I think a thought process could be take the over right now and see if it keeps on steaming in that direction. If we were to get to a situation where um, maybe we get a lot of enthusiasm around Hooker, then you could maybe take the under as well later on, depending on where it gets to. Because I think plus 144 is a good number. I don't know where it would be later on. Because again, I'm very skeptical of Hooker and I, I wouldn't mind diving in there. But I think this market's going to keep on moving because we've seen a lot of enthusiasm around Hooker from smart guys. Daniel Jeremiah is very plugged in uh, to the NFL. You're talking about sources to trust. <laughs> yeah, if you want to trust guys who know the NFL, Jeremiah, from a mock drafting perspective, is one of the first guys you'll, you'll think of. Peter Schrager also has a very good track record. Um, so there are certain guys you trust, who or should trust, I should say, who are putting in there which means to me that market will keep on moving. We want to get good closing line value, want to get ahead of markets. And I think it could give you a good hedging option later on. Cause I think I agree that you're a read on it, Ed, where that plus 144 may keep getting short. So although I personally am skeptical that Hooker goes in the first, I think the market is in a good spot to potentially right. uh, buy into that right now and maybe check back on it later on, I guess is the way I'd phrase that. I would also like to add it. It should never matter what you think a team should do. Right, right, as much, exactly. As, as brilliant as you are, Jim Sonis, <laughs> at evaluating football players, and, and obviously my brilliance as well, um, it doesn't matter what I would do. That that it, it, I'm not a GM. It, it, it doesn't. I'm not a GM. I never will be. And so do I think Hendon Hooker should be taken in the first round? No. I thought Marcus Mariota was the best quarterback of all – I thought Marcus Mariota was the best quarterback prospect of all time. You know? Yeah. We all make still, mistakes. He's he's still in the league. That's not you know. In theory, um, I know he's a back. He's a backup for the Eagles. I hope he thrives there. But you know, he's hanging on for dear life. Um, right. Like, do I think Will Levis should be drafted at all? No, I think he's going to be freaking terrible. But that doesn't really impact my betting, right? Like, right. I think Levis is going to get overlooked because of the rise of Anthony Richardson. Would I draft Anthony Richardson? Absolutely not. No, no way. But that doesn't matter. His stock is on the rise, right? And it has been ever since the combine. So, uh, yeah, I, I try to, I, I definitely try to separate those things out. Exactly. And that's why I, again, am okay with the plus 144 and over four and a half quarterbacks because it does seem as if the market will move that way. Smart people like Jeremiah have him in their first round mocks. And I think that's the information that matters. My evaluation does not matter. Daniel Jeremiah's does in weighing that in for sure. Like I said, we'll have more NFL draft talk in the coming weeks. We're going to talk to Ed about do like kind of a more full breakdown of betting NFL draft props, numbers he likes. We'll open that up to all sports books too, so we can use a proper market, proper price shopping and stuff like that to get you ready for the NFL draft. But it was fun to get a little teaser for today, talk about that, talk about takeaways and more. Uh, and I appreciate uh, the insights. Uh, what's going on for you at the Power Rank right now? 
still riding uh, Five Nuggets Saturday, and um, been lucky that uh, there've been a lot of winners in there recently. So check that out at thepowerrank.com, and obviously the newsletter will have more football stuff as football season comes back. Uh, but for now, uh, every Saturday, it's just uh, if you need some action, I try to help you out. And it sounds like there's draft stuff in there too. So if you are intrigued oh, yeah, yeah. by the NFL draft discussion, check out Ed's newsletter. Go to thepowerrank.com to sign up for that. Find Ed on Twitter at thepowerrank. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J I M S A N N E S. We are back once again tomorrow talking more NBA playoffs. We'll also talk the NHL regular season final couple of games. We'll see you there. Talk more about that. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 